before we start this video, you're gonna hear a cowbell in the background. It's not a cowbell, it's a horse bell. Hey, hee haw. I'm with T-Jack Survival and Survival Dispatch. I want to talk to you a little bit about solar panels. Not specifically my solar panel, but just solar panels in general. Um, move a little bit of this. When you're in the backcountry, sometimes you need uh, a power source. It may be because of uh, ham radios. Might be because of a Garmin or a satellite texting device. Might be because of a cell phone, could be because of a camera. I happen to have all of that stuff with me currently, and there's a lot of stuff that you need to take into account when choosing a power source. Either you can take one battery in that will last you a, a week, maybe, if you're only charging a cell phone, or maybe I can smoke this thing overnight if I'm charging a cell phone and a ham radio and batteries for a camera. So, we have to take into account weight, even though this is a battery, it's, it's less weight than this one right here. This is a 15 amp hour battery, so it's a huge amount of, of juice. And this is a little bit smaller, but I can take this, stick it inside of my case, and it can be charging batteries while we're traveling. <clears throat> but I can take that, and let, let me back up and explain what, the way that I like to look at solar panels and batteries. Solar panels are like rain. The bigger the space, the more the sunlight, the more the rain. It is completely entirely possible for it to rain more than your reservoir's capacity to retain. So if I've got that 60 watt power film uh, solar panel out there, I'll show you in a second, I can load this thing up at night and it, it can also produce more electricity than I have the capacity to load and it's kind of a waste, right? So if your solar panel's bigger than your battery, as far as its ability, its speed, or its ability to take in electricity, then you either need a smaller solar panel for less weight to match the battery, or you need a larger battery to catch all of that electricity. And a battery is very much like a reservoir, okay? So if I have a giant reservoir and a small amount of rain, it still puts its puts electricity slash rain into that reservoir it just takes a long time it might be multiple days if I have a giant amount of rain and really small amount of reservoir then the reservoir can only fill up so fast but we end up with a situation where we have excess which gives us the ability to charge something and fill the reservoir at the same time so it's kind of all about finding that balance of how much rain that we can take in efficiently and how much reservoir that we can fill. The other, the other thing that's good to know is if we have a 15 amp hour battery like this uh, lithium iron phosphate or lift pole battery, I can bring a lot of electricity with me that I can smoke, just be gone with, without even needing a solar panel. Here, I've been charging batteries for my camera, charging cell phone, which I use for my GPS, and uh, satellite texting 
and charging our radios. So I've been, I have a lot of power, so I have a very large solar panel, a, a very large battery, which is a lot of rain and a lot of reservoir. And then I initially wasn't gonna bring this, but I like to take this out with me because if I get stuck out there for a night or two, or, or if I'm using the phone a lot or whatever, I can charge it while I'm walking. And there's nothing wrong with the solar panel filling up the base reservoir of electricity and then loading this at nighttime so that when I go out during the day, I have a virtually unlimited amount of electricity. So let's go look at the, let me, let me give you a close up of this uh, battery real quick or my system. It's really gonna be the solar panel, some sort of a hub device, and then, or a, a trickle charger, and then a, a tender or something that keeps it from overcharging. In this case, I've got BioNO, which is the type of battery. It's a 15 amp hour, 12 volt battery, lithium iron phosphate, and there's a, a chipset right here. So I can run and I did this on purpose for ham radios because I'll use HF ham radios is the reason I got this battery. But I can run the Anderson power pole or I can connect this little connection here which will either take electricity from a solar panel like it's doing right now or in this case push electricity out to a uh, two USB ports. Now this is currently pulling electricity from the solar panel and pushing it out to these other two USBs I'm not using them all right now. I'm going to hook some more stuff up here in a minute. And so it's the solar panel is charging the battery and recharging the uh, GPS texting device at the same time. The, this third thing is just another little dongle so I can attach it straight to the solar panel. In a perfect world, you'd have one type of connector for everything. The problem is I've got some things that work with Anderson Power Pole like my... Um, uh, my ham radio equipment. I've got some things that work with vehicle connections, which is what I have here, like my trailer. And I have some things that work with this other proprietary connection, like all of the bioanal batteries. So realistically, I could chop them all off and make them all Anderson Power Pole if I wanted to, but then I'm chopping off all the connections of all my devices. And I've just chosen to just kind of strap these three together, it's not that much more weight. So, let's go look at the solar panel. Right outside of the tent, we've got this cable running to my solar panel. This is a 60 watt power film solar panel, and it will fold up into a little book about the size of one square. I like this because it's foldable, it can get rained on, and uh, it's super lightweight and I can just and it's a 60 watt uh, 12 volt panel so I can pull in a lot of juice with a minimal amount of weight the other thing is when I was in the Colombian jungle hello horses so I learned the hard way when I was in the Colombian jungle there's two types of solar panel without getting into too much detail there's one type of solar panel where if any shadow hits the panel it short circuits the whole thing it's a little more efficient solar panel and it'll create a little more electricity but one shadow shuts it down and when I was in the Colombian jungle in South America it was like constant trees moving and there was light but it was just constantly shorting out my panel so I had some goal zero panels that had that technology more efficient but less functional because any amount of shadow shuts it down. But um, you have the problem of the canopy and one of the ways we get around that is we're either at a creek or something where we'll put these on the side of the bank and, and try and get some solar juice out of that or we're in the jungle uh, trees grow everywhere very very quickly we'll cut a small thin tree down attach the solar panel on top of it and then put the tree back up so that we can penetrate the canopy a little bit better maybe throw the cell phone up there because there's just a small chance because they have all these little small satellite uh, receptions in some of the jungle vi villages uh, satellite um, uh, satellite antennas uh, that you might even be able to get reception up there so it's just interesting to see when we put the uh, solar panels up there I these guys behind me are basically a bunch of little baby solar panels in a, in in uh, I think in series if I, if I remember that correctly so a bunch of little solar panels in series so any amount of shadow is still gonna create electricity as right now it's it's overcast and there's 
there's no direct sunlight and everything's coming through the clouds but I'm still pushing 13 volts according to the charger from that panel behind me so it's more efficient and you can kind of leave it untended and stick it in a rock in a, in a non-perfect place and still come back and your battery your battery will be completely recharged that 15 volts that 15 amp hour battery will be recharged in about eight hours of good utah sunlight um, i can use this one and my 120 watt solar panel together and charge up two car batteries and it recharges my camper overnight. So that's a lot of electricity. It's a little more than I need, but I would rather have a little more than I need than I would run out and have a dead battery when I'm trying to charge things at night. So basically I look at it like the solar panel is the rain that goes into the battery, which is the reservoir. And then I come back at nighttime with all the little trinkets and devices and batteries for these cameras, slurp it out of the reservoir while I'm sleeping, and then leave the next day and just it kind of rains and pulls it into the reservoir during the day. And it works for me, it works really, really great. And this setup is bigger than normal, but it's still. It's only a couple pounds. That that battery, I'm gonna weigh it. I'm gonna guess it's about three pounds. This is this weighs less than my boots, whatever that is. So I'll try to post somewhere the weight of the power film panel and the bio NO battery to give you a basis of comparison. But they make smaller ones. If all you're charging is just like a cell phone or just a ham radio or just something smaller, that little uh battery that I had in there would be just fine if you only be out for a few days or a smaller like 15 watt 20 watt solar panel would be just fine where I've got a lot of electricity needs especially with ham radios I have to carry something bigger all right guys hopefully this is valuable to you I uh, really like the analogy of the rain in the reservoir so I wanted to share that to you and it's kind of all about figuring out what your need is and then matching it so that you're not going overboard and having to carry the weight. Now, if it's something that you're not carrying, go ahead and go overboard because there's nothing like too much electricity. Thanks. Thirteen volts in the shade.